I'll go get this nigger and I'm going to take his ass down. Is that him speaking or is that a reflection of the subculture he comes from? Honestly, you know you're not born that way. You're taught to hate other people. You're taught those slanty eye passes, the goddamn Germans are called crowds. That takes away the human aspect. All the Germans are stupid, the Arabs are stupid, all governments are. They're all killing machines. And we have to, if we want to live in a world without war, without hatred, without poverty, unemployment, street people, or human suffering, you have to face up to the problems, and those are the problems that I talked about, Roxanne and talked about. And if we fail to take on that thing, if we fail to take on responsibility for our own future, others will do our thinking for us. That's you called fascism. What do you other think? One of the things we want to do is a major motion picture because we feel that films get to more people faster and can help change values. Um, in World War II in the United States, they had young Christians that they wanted to get to go and kill, and they had trouble doing that. So they hired Frank Capra to make a film called Why We Fight, and they did these fictitious scenes where they took women who were pregnant and then they took Chinese Americans and put false teeth on them that stuck out crooked and green and then they bayoneted, bayoneted the, the mother you know right where the where she was pregnant and they the enlistment went up 75 percent right away so we feel we can make films to show people a more constructive direction and this works better than lectures or any other way. Just like, uh, there, you know, we were working in obscurity for 35 years and it took us meeting one person, jo Peter Joseph, who did one film, and then within a year we had the movement all over the world. So it really depends on what people do. If they go out and talk to people about this direction and learn more about it so they know how to answer more appropriately, it, it would be very helpful. And we can eventually, you know, that no system remains the same. No country can freeze things. They're always in states of change. So this system is falling also. And when it does fall, we might have enough people out there to understand this direction to point in a more positive, constructive direction. That's how you can create common heritage. If enough people understand this direction and we're in a position to work on it, Sometimes to do something. Sometimes people ask me whether the capitalist will give up his factories he want. No, he won't. When the Chevy can't compete with Toyota, they go out of business. And the government bailed them out. They bailed out the banks. All the people that created the problems, they gave the money to. What money did they give them? The money for schools, education, to feed the poor. They gave it to the banks the same bastards that created the problem in the first place. So if you don't understand how money works, there's a tape you can get, or a DVD called uh, The, the Money, money Masters. Masters. You ever hear of it? It tells you how banks work and how they share people. If you really want to know, and they really want to know how to communicate with people, the book is called Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase. Another one, Science and Sanity by Alfred Corsetti. And if you want to know where religion came from, Man and His Gods by Homer W. Smith. The poet is written by Albert Einstein. I can't get those books in the library. There's an organization called the Heritage Foundation. And they try and remove books from libraries, the books that would rock the boat. I've never appeared on American television, maybe one section. And I can't get on because they feel Fresco is a threat. The attacks of cigarette companies, the drug companies, the people that modify food, so they don't only have to get their seeds. The people that spray poisons on plants. You can design sonic devices to keep insects off plants. You need to spray poison on them. That was known 56 years ago. They still don't do it. So I'm trying to tell you something that your brain has been filled with crap all the years. Motion pictures, television, all bullshit. And I'm trying to tell you that I didn't, when I was about 21, 
I wondered what people would be like if they weren't exposed to this kind of education. So I got a job on a boat and I jumped ship on a, a group of islands called Tua Mautu, about a thousand miles east of Tahiti. And when I got there, everybody walked around completely new. And I noticed that the men there never looked at a woman's body. They were swimming nude ever since they were this high. And if you gave them a picture of a woman's body, said, I can't see the face. Who is it? They never stared at the tits, legs, or butt, yeah. only the eyes. And I wondered, gee, were there any peeping toms on there? No, there's no need for a wire body. A peeping tom evolved in a culture that covers things. You understand that? So in the islands, they didn't cover anything. So I wondered how they made love to one another when they had fetish. Of course not. They put their hands on top of the female's head and stroked the whole person. They be like you. But they were no tip men, leg men, ass men, hair men. That's made in this point. Another very interesting thing about the island <clears throat> is when you stroke a dog, you stroke the whole dog. You don't stop at the balls. You stroke the whole dog. You understand? All right, so people are shaped like cults. If you still don't understand me, if you were brought up in Japan, you'd bow. You know what I mean? We say, you don't have to bow to me. They said, that. that's a reflex, established reflex. Most of your thoughts are not your own. And thoughts which are generated by motion pictures, novels, plays, the world you live in. I know a girl who was brought up in a home where her dad was very mean to mother. Extremely mean. He beat her up a lot, and he beat up the daughter a lot. And she came up to me and said, boy, I'm never getting married. Where she's coming from, that makes sense. She's never known anything else. So people turn out to be serial killers, not inborn. It's because of a certain aspect of the environment. And you say, well, how can a serial killer be made by environment? I'm going to tell you that, and you try to figure out the rest of it. This kid was about seven years old, touching his private parts. And mother was an old time Baptist. She came and said, you're gonna burn in hell touching that body part. That's satanic. She scared the hell out of that kid. And the mother said at two in the morning, he stuck needles in his genitals. He was screaming. And she came in and said, what are you doing? He said, well, I don't want to go to hell, mommy. So he used to take minority kids in the woods and try to cut their tendons off to save them from hell. There is no such thing as a bad person or a good person. Depends on where they're coming from, the kind of environment they lived in. There's a hand up back there. If you don't understand that, raise the question. Uh, Genetically, all you inherit from parents is the color of the eyes, the shape of the nose, the propensity toward heart disease, but not really. Prejudice, bigotry, that's learned. I have a question, please. Uh, up here on the balcony. Okay. All right. Uh, my question is about the greed, um, because I didn't understand if 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 everyone has the the equal access to all of the resources. Um, but we know from our experience that, for example, when you, when you give someone too much food, he or she overfeeds and so on. Uh, how is the notion of greed? When you give somebody too much food, they overfeed. You know, if it rained rain gold today, people would be pulling it into their closets, they'd be filling their <coughs> cellars, you know, in their attics. But if it rained gold for 40 days, you'd be sweeping it out. <laughs> so, it's like asking, what is a glass of water worth? Well, what if you're on a raft and a millionaire is dying, you say, that oh, cost you $50,000. He says, that's outrageous. For two days from then, he says, is that really it, the value of anything depends on how abundant it is. In Kimberley diamond mines, they burn so many tons of diamonds every year because they're made of carbon that keeps the price up. And if you invented a tire 
and was good for 20 years. The tire company would buy that tire, but they won't produce it. There's no sense in it. It put them out of business. You have to think about this. It looks natural today that people are greedy because they think it's been that way all through history, and it has because we always live in a society of scarcity. And scarcity is maintained by using the monetary system, but in the resource-based economy, the job is to produce abundance as quickly as possible. And a lot of the aberrant behavior that you think is normal and inborn would disappear. All right, can I give you uh, an example? For example, there are people who are collectors of sport cars, uh, sport cars, right? And they like own hundreds of sport cars. But uh, if everyone has had unlimited access to uh, all kinds of sport cars, some, some people would actually c c collect like thousands of them, and that would be a waste. Okay, I can try to answer that. There are people that collect paintings too. Well, they, they spend millions of very wealthy people. If the Venus Project comes along, we will approach those people and say, You have 40 paintings, original, will you put them on tour so everyone can enjoy them? He said, No, they're mine. We put that in the morning paper. He said, No, they're mine. <laughs> you understand what that was? He'll be giving out his paintings. In other words, anyone that has anything like that, a collection of automobiles that he's made over the years, and we say, if you let the world enjoy that collection, send it out there, we'll put it on tour. And he says, no, then why we we'll put that in the newspaper too? So you see, it's not difficult to turn people around. I worked on the Arabs, the Klan, and many other groups, alcoholics, drug addicts, and I turned them around. But I really didn't care whether they stopped using drugs. My main interest was to make them aware socially, and then they had no need for drugs. In other words, I never taught my boy, my little boy, how to read. I used to read to him at night in the bed, and then I, when I got to the most interesting part of the book, I closed it. Oh. He said, Daddy, what happened then? I said, look, if you learn to read, you can find out for yourself. <laughs> and so, don't teach good mathematics. Give them a reason to want to learn. And teachers don't know that. Teachers use words like, if they spell cat with a K, they say, that's wrong. When you say that's wrong, think about it. There's no information on those words. The kid gets nothing from it. Well, that's not what I told you. That doesn't buy information. When a kid spells cat with a K, A, T, I say very close. It's just the front letter, the K, that we change to C. But if he writes it with a C facing the wrong way, the next time I say much closer, isn't it? But if you say wrong, nothing happens. There's no information. So most of our language has no information. And you're brought up that way. And that's how they manipulate you. I'm keeping you from knowing things. And if you really want to know the answer, there's a book called Science and Sanity by Alfred Korsitzky. You can look it up on the website. There's many books called Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase. Language and Thought and Action by Hayek Health. I don't want to take my word for anything. And I want to thank you for coming. And I deeply appreciate all that you will do. Take a lot more questions. We have until can I, we have about an hour. Can I just? <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Here, I'm your. Uh, here, I'm waiting on your last side. Okay. So you uh, you just mentioned it's easier to turn the kid and the people on your side, but how are you going to turn the politics on your side? Politicians. How are you going to turn the politicians on your side? When a company fails, when a government fails, governments go bankrupt. Did you know that? 
reached, we bailed them out. 